On tonight's Words From My Face, we're talking about Powers, the new PlayStation Network TV show. We're ta- talking about GamesCon, and of course, we have to talk about the one topic everybody doesn't really know about, but they should know about, that they should talk about. How we should stop Sylvester Stallone. Stay tuned. <laughs> Greatest round ones of all time, of all sports, ever. Think though, Beverly Hills Cop, Robocop crossover needs to happen. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Words to My Face. My name is Brian. With me, as always, producer extraordinaire, Brendan. You. And we are the one and only home of the Chewbacca Chainsaws. <laughs> yep, yep. We're, we're practicing this dual choreography where I do something and then he does something with the Chewbacca Chainsaw. Yeah, we're, we're, we're up in our level of Chewbacca Chainsaws up. You know, you, just, you never know what to expect out of us. That's, that's how we roll. Even That's the thing with Chewbacca chainsaws, though. When that starts escalating, it gets bad. Yeah, bad for all humankind. Yeah, bad for all humankind. That is for sure. But so tonight we're coming at you with an entertainment show, and uh, for the second time in Redskins preseason this year, we have to do the show instead of watch the game. So that shows how much we love you guys. That shows because football's on. I don't know if you know this. It's on. It is on, and we haven't had it in how many months? Too many, many months. Too many months. Uh, just too but many. We're still here. We're still yeah. here for you. For you. For you, just the viewers you. slash listeners. I don't know. I haven't decided what we are yet. We're kind of like a pod tube cast. Huh? Coin that phrase? Coin it? Coin? No, no coin. No. Nope, no, no. no, no coin on that one. Oh, that was a good idea. That was a good idea. I saw the womp coming. I, that, usually I welcome the womps. I did not want that womp, but yeah. So like I said, tonight is Monday. We are doing our entertainment show of the week. This is where we catch you up on, uh, you know, pretty much what we think is cool going on in the world of TV, movies, and video games. But we start this off pretty special every week, and it's special for everybody else. It's not as special for me, because I torture myself with it, and that is the horrible movie of the week review. <laughs> and so this week's horrible movie brought to you by my not not friend Justin. So thank you very much for this horrible horrible movie. Yes. Um and it, I was going to think of another gory reference like I used to do. I just didn't have it off the top of the head. That's why you saw a long pause. Failure. I did fail on that one. Mm. You could have want me on that one, but since you prematurely already want me, you can't want me now. Ha ha! I'm want proof, even though I don't have the button. Darn it! If I had the button, it might make me want proof, but I don't. So, but yeah. So this week I watched Cybergeddon, and yes, it has a very cheesy name to it, and that's you know probably part of uh, just that leads into this movie. So this was the tagline when I saw when I found this movie was. Starring Missy Pengram, Paragram, whatever her name is, from Rookie Blue. And I was thinking, I was like, I've heard of the show Rookie Blue, but I've never heard of this actress. And then when I saw her, I was like, she kind of looks familiar, but I can't really be honest that I've ever seen her before. So when when your thing is that, hey, we're starring this actress, that's not even, like, that great. I mean, it's it's not a good start to the movie. The, uh, I don't know if you ever saw them, but I remember them because this was funny. Uh, bedazzled commercials or whatever, like whatever, or bejeweled, whatever they were. It was like studs, some arts and crafts products. Mm-hmm. 
And the big thing was, they would be like, "Hi, I'm Ronnie Deutsch from National Television, and I'm back." And I was like, oh, "Like, like the National Television? Guy. Like, <laughs> that means like you like, maybe you were somewhere. Where were you? Where were you on National Television? Were you at another commercial on National Television? Were you at a TV show on National Television? Really did, did anyone care? Were you an extra? Like, come were on. you? Yeah, did you walk past this one scene at this one point that somehow made it onto National Television? Were you photobombing somebody who was broadcasting live? I mean, were, yeah. you, were you in the background of a newscast or something? Like, I'm yeah. on it from national television? Like, come on. Yeah. It doesn't really count, sorry. But yeah, so I knew this was, you know, going to be a horrible movie because it starts off with somebody, I guess they're in the middle of a torture scene or something like that. And he goes, you may think you're in a movie, but in movies they don't do this and it's not real. And it's like, no, in movies they do do that because he was like kidnapping this guy's daughter so that he would do some cyber crime. And I just was like, they're ripping off Swordfish, so you ripped your plot right off of another movie. How can you say that this they isn't a movie? Movies. Yeah. So that that was that was the start to it. Um, of course, playing melodically throughout the background of the movie the entire time was this horrible tonal like music, like dong, da da da. Da, 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 da. It's like one guy, they were like, here's 50 bucks, go over there, bang on a keyboard, and hit the buttons up top and change the noises every now and then. And that's what you got for the soundtrack. And, I, I mean, it's, I don't know about everybody else out there, but hey, a good soundtrack hey, makes a movie sometimes. Yeah, that's true. But I think we need to hire this guy to play in the background for us. We could, we could use a da 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 Yes, the whole time. We'll, we'll talk it. Dong, da da dong. Da 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 That's pretty much what you got, the whole movie. So that was fun. Um, and it seems like every time they start a scene, it's like, okay, you know when they go up and they have the little thing of action? It seems like they start rolling, they go action, and then everybody like waits for a couple seconds because you can tell when they start up a scene because everybody just sits there and stares at each other for a second. And then like, okay, now we'll act. All right. It's like, uh, yeah. Probably should have edited out part of that. Not so great. But yeah, so that was that was fun. Um, and half the time, it doesn't sound like they're talking, to be honest with you. It sounds like they mouthed the words, and then they went back and they re-recorded it because the sound equipment they used wasn't good enough or something like that and couldn't pick up the sounds well, and so they had to re-record it over. But then it just... It just they didn't match it up off. properly. Well, they matched it up pretty good. It just it sounds off the entire time. It just is like if it sounds it's... off, they didn't match it up well. Yeah. Well, that's... I mean, you, yeah. It, that, they, that's they didn't match up well. That that's the best way to do it because it just like it might it be just, just like right. off, but if it's off and you notice it and it bothers you, that's that's a problem. Yeah. So, but like this movie is really it's it's based off of this FBI agent who they show her she went undercover in the beginning of it and. And they show her coming out of the deep cover. She's some some really career. She's trying to call, climb the ladder. They show that she breaks up with a boy because she's like, oh well, I'm gonna be big in in the CIA right now, so I gotta or the FBI, so I gotta break up with you. And it's just pretty bad. Um, of course, she had a dark past. So as a hacker in the movie Cyber Get In, and then she gets framed. And to free her and to clear her name, she goes to a prison. And checks out an inmate. Now, she's on the run, and yet she still shows up at a prison and says, I need to check out this guy because I'm an FBI agent. And they're just like, okay, here's this prisoner. Like, don't you, like, check, make sure she has authorization before you do something like that? Nah, that's not necessary. You just let prisoners out, hey. (laughs) Yeah. Anybody who shows up and says they're FBI, duh, they're not lying about a thing. Let's let's let her take the prison. No, well, here's the thing: no one ever tries to break out of prison. Yeah, no, no one has any motivation happens. to leave a prison. Why would anyone? And why would anyone want to get someone out of prison? Come on, now. it makes no sense. But but you, what else doesn't make sense? And this is the worst part of it: is when he's being escorted out. He's like, "What are you? What are you doing, guys? It's macaroni and cheese night. I don't want to leave." It's like what? You See, I told you, no one wants to leave prison. What did and I then say? he shows up, and he keeps saying, hey, I want to go back to prison. Hey, I want to go back. Hey, I want to go back. It's what did like, I say? What are you talking about, you want to go back? You were in prison. You are now free. <laughs> prison is they not where you should want to be. Bride. They have the best macaroni and cheese in prison. I'm sure you can prison. find the prison recipe. I'm sure it's not that hard. It's probably just the box. <laughs> you know, so... <laughs> probably not that hard to figure it out. So, yeah, so all this is happening. Um, 
it's it's horrible because there's a super uncharismatic villain, and I don't know about you, but a villain is one of the biggest parts to a movie because if the villain is not a charismatic villain, you don't hate that villain. You can't really love the antagonist, I mean protagonist, so... What do you mean by charismatic villain? You're going to have, like, just, I don't know, villains that are just off and you don't really see much, you just know that they're evil? Yeah, but then then you're like, oh, you're drawn. You're like, okay, he's evil. There's a reason this is going on. Wow, that guy's evil. Okay, you know, like I believe in his character. I I I, I trust that this good guy has to be so good because the bad guy is so bad. And it's just like I don't care. I almost want the villain to win because everybody's so horrible acting in this world. It was okay. Bad. Yeah, and I, and and so goes. yeah, it, it was pretty bad. Pretty bad. Um. And I just want to share um, one of the, the lines from this movie because at the end, of course, like I said, it's called Cybergeddon, so it's about a big cyber attack that's going to end the world. So this hacker who gets taken out of prison that wanted to stay in prison, um, yeah, at one point they're trying to hack into the system and shut down this big virus and everything, and he uses the line, are we party rocking in the house tonight or what? Hold on a moment. Let me think about that. Are we party rocking in any house tonight or what? Honestly, one of the worst quotes I've ever had seen had from a movie um, probably rivals when I had one that was uh, something like uh, the whole world went to crap after those blue M and M's came out. Like <laughs> it was just one of those just really really horrendous lines, and that was pretty much all the way through it. And, of course, at the end, the bad guy's not really caught or gone, and, like, they think there's going to be a sequel. That was probably the funniest part of the movie. It was like, <laughs> you guys, you think that they're going to make a sequel of this movie? That's why you're keeping the bad guy around at the end? Like, really? Did, did you, were you not there when like, they taped this whole Mario thing? The Mario Bros. movie? The Mario yeah. Bros. movie? They thought they were going to have a sequel. <laughs> you didn't, you didn't, you didn't see it, like, yourself? Like, is that, is that what happened here? Like, the studio didn't watch the movie and just released it? Like, <laughs> yeah. So, this one's a pretty horrible one. This one's going to go ahead and get 1.5 Chewbacca Chainsaws out of 5. Because it was <laughs> Yeah, that was it. Was a pretty harsh movie. I'm glad I'm done with it because, um, yeah, I was trying to. I actually, you know what? I'm gonna downgrade it a half a star. It only gets one Chewbacca chainsaw out of five. I, I don't know how to take away. I don't just, know how to take have, away. Half to, half I the just took it away. I just took it away. Don't worry, it's it's gone. It flew off into magical world. And you know, a movie's bad when I'm still thinking about it. and It's like, wait, no, no, that's way too high of a rating for that movie because I wrote it down after I was done with the movie. But on further contemplation. Yeah, I was just too nice to that movie. I'm sorry. I, it was it was bad. Seems our listener Joe agrees, uh, and he says that that line, party rocking in the house tonight, is evidence of the decline of our civilization, which would also uh, be correlated with the decline of the Chewbacca chainsaws. Yes, throughout that review. Go. That is why it came down. Joe, you are correct. I agree with you, Joe. So, yeah, um... Yeah, that was a horrible movie. So let's just get off of that, even though we're not really getting into anything better right now. We're just kind of wading through the filth in the beginning of the show to build up to the good end. And that is because I need somebody out there, anybody out there, to stop Sylvester Stallone. Quit ruining your movie franchises. I say this because Expendables 3 just came out uh, last week or two weeks ago. Yeah, last week. Uh, and it's, it's, it's absolutely horrendous. I mean, I haven't seen it, but it like got like a 20% on Rotten Tomatoes. You, you got to be doing something. I didn't even hear happens. about that movie. Did they even advertise that very much? Expendables three. Yeah, like I didn't see the ads. Yeah, and it's just like, hey, we we can bring in more and more and more of these horrible. What? Nah, I'm not gonna say horrible. A lot of these guys were amazing in their primes, but all these action stars from the '80s. Like, how many more can you fit in? Like, they have. Did they bring Justin back? Jet Li's back. Mel Gibson's in there. They're, uh, Harrison Ford is in this one. Arnold Schwarzenegger is not back, but that that's another story. But they have Ronda Rousey, which I think she's a really good MMA fighter. She actually won a Chewbacca Chainsaw of the Week award uh, for our sports show a couple weeks back. But her acting prowess, I can't imagine, is top-notch. Just not, not feeling it. But 
I after the Expendables came out and it's flopped. I mean, it did like 16 million its first week and probably cost over 100 million to make, and it won't make that money back. I can't imagine. Um, Expendables two is horrible. Expendables one, not so bad, kind of fun. But I now mean, Expendables one, I saw one scene of, and I was told that was all I needed to see. And I believed it, but it was cool. It was a good action scene. It wasn't a bad movie. It, it, it was what it, it was what it was, it was advertised exactly to be. What you expected. Hey. We're going to give you a loose, like the first one was, we're just going to give you a semi-plot and we're going to throw all these guys together and they're going to mess some stuff up. And you're like, okay, here we go. And then the second one, they're like, we're going to do the same thing again. And it just turned out to be super horrible, like just like the 300 movies. 300 was great. And then 300 Rise of an Empire was like, hey, we're just going to do the same stuff. And it just didn't work. So Yeah, well, the Expendables thing, you'd think, hey, action. You can just throw more action. But I think they threw so much action into the first one. You know, they were already doing the whole, hey, what if we did this thing? Man, what mm-hmm. if we did just threw this thing in? What if we made it so... They already did the whole ridiculous plot line and ridiculous, like, just huge action scene. And they probably couldn't think of anything better to do. <laughs> you know, where do we go from here? It just... It just... It hurt watching Expendables 2. That's, that's for sure. It really... It and then just three, hurt. where are you going to go from there after yeah, you've no. already down used up your second rate? <laughs> down is where you're going to go from there. But I really am talking about this not because The Expendables just came out, but because he's about to start shooting on Rambo 5. Now, Rambo 4 came out a couple years ago, and it wasn't horrible. I'm not going to lie to you and say, oh, they ruined the Rambo series. But they didn't. But just like The Expendables wasn't horrible the first time around because it was like, okay, this is fun. The second time around is not going to be good. So look for him to ruin that. And I'm just praying that he doesn't want to ruin some of his other franchises. Like, what about Cliffhanger? What are they going to do with that? Like, back to the mountain. Just no when you thought it was safe. To climb mountains again. Cliffhanger Part 2. Did what we really need, though... It? Hold on. The way where we really need things to go is we need a Rocky Rambo crossover in just alone. Yeah, just where a just, play, it's a one man play Rambo. <laughs> a one man play Rocky versus <laughs> Yeah, and they did do a Rocky Six and he kinda ruined that one too. So I mean what the hell? Uh, I just I, I I just don't understand it. Stallone, slow down, buddy. Come on. You're you're seventy years old, your face does not move at all, you cannot show expression anymore, and why are you still in movies, dude? Come on. Just be happy with your money, be like all the other fading actors, and be a producer. Throw your money away and mm-hmm. someone else. Stop doing the action. You know, maybe maybe show us. Show us up. He can't move his you face, man. That's not fair. How are it's you going right. to emote? He'll do Demolition Man 2. Demolition Man 2, Rise of the the New World. Yeah, well, that, right? that makes me... That's, and it'll that's be a actually... serious drama about reconstructing civilization after the bad But he experience. can't move his face. <laughs> he can't move his face. He just so can't It's going it. to be so serious, he's, he's not supposed to move no. his face. That's well, going to be well, the only expression he needs in the movie. Everyone's going to cry, and he has to make business decisions. Hey, yo, we construct the future, yo. Hey, yo. Hey, yo, Taco Bell's a good place to eat. Because remember, we in need Demolition to prevent Man, the next was... earthquake. <laughs> remember, in Demolition Man, they always went to Taco Bell. That was the fancy restaurant. Yep. Yep. That was the only restaurant left. Ah, there you go. Taco Bell, the only one approved. So, yeah. And, and, um,. I was actually reading an article, uh, another interview of him, and it was funny because he mentioned something where he blamed uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger for some of his biggest flops in his career. And he said in 1984 he took two roles that he wouldn't have taken otherwise because they were huge flops. One was Rhinestone, don't really know that one. But Stop or My Mom Will Shoot was the other one. And you can just infer from the title how horrible that one probably was. But he said, yeah, Arnold, I was just scared he was going to take all the good roles, so I had to, you know, take some of them roles. You know, I'm, I'm not thirsty. I just need something to drink. That was a brisk yeah, advice. Right. So, right. <laughs> that was me making you fun. Something? You something? All right. Here's a better idea. Again, coming from, from Joe, he was saying that maybe we should have one of these movies where the stars actually fight to the death. You know what that made me think we really need? And we can pull in some other guys with Stallone. An Expendables type movie of Thunderdome. Well, you could, I mean, really, you have the Expendables cast to just throw them into the Thunderdome. You have Mel Gibson's yep. there. Uh, of course, Sylvester Stallone, Jet Li, Jason Statham, yeah, Terry Crews. Actually, those Wesley guys. Snipes, I believe, was in the last one. Chuck Norris mm-hmm. has been in there at one of those times. So, of course, Chuck Norris is going to win. But then, if you throw Chewbacca in the mix with him, eh? Uh, that would That's really. Real. Be, we've talked about this money. before too. Thunderdome has chainsaws. As soon as Chewbacca yeah. gets that chainsaw, it's done. done. The, done. With Chewbacca chainsaws, everyone can enter the the Thunderdome 
no one leaves the city. But <laughs> well, of course. I mean, there's very few places he walks into that anybody else but him walks out of, but yeah. So let us know what you think. How are we going to stop Stallone? Come on, guys. We need a plan. I got a hint for how we're to do a- it. Should we donate we money to a Kickstarter just to, hey, we'll pay you to stop making movies. Should we do that? Should we stop making movies, Stallone, Kickstarter? Let us know. Hit us up. Comments down below. Of course, at Words My Face on Twitter. Words My Face at gmail.com. Google Plus and Facebook. All good ways to get a hold of us. Of course, the real way we're going to do it. Nobody expects the Chewbacca with a chainsaw. Nobody. Except for us. We always expect it because it Stallone won't expect it. He won't. <laughs> and it's not like he can really like move very fast to, to see him coming, so... But, yeah. So, let's take that, and let's take that negative note of Sylvester Stallone and turn it into a positive, because something that is coming out that I think is going to be really cool, and that is the Powers TV show. Now, this is going to be on PlayStation Network. Uh, it's the first jump of theirs into the realm of, like, the Netflix, the Amazon, making their own original programming that you could only find on their specific network. And this powers, if you haven't heard of it, it is a comic book. It was started back in 2000, um, was first run by uh, Image Comics before that got absorbed into Icon, which is a Marvel comic brand. But, yeah, so it's still running, 2000 to... It, Plus, you know, so, but the cool thing about this, this show is I love the idea. I think it's the perfect 10 episode story arc that you could get because what it, it features characters in an ordinary world, but it's not so uncommon for people to have superpowers. So you have a lot of these superhumans running around. It's not quite like the universes of like Marvel and DC where it's more unique to have for somebody who have powers. So it's a little less out of the ordinary, and they've adapted it's to this. It's not really society. unique in those either, though. Like, they always still treat it like, oh, superpowers guy. But there's so many people that it kind of loses its charm after a while. And even well, some of in the... In Marvel uh, and Marvel DC, you're talking they, maybe maybe thousands of characters have superpowers, but there's billions of people of us on this world. So I think it's a little bit bigger of a ratio with powers. But Powers really focuses on two detectives, um, and these guys are part of a special police force that uh, actually investigates power crime. So they call the people with powers people just powers. Um, and so these guys go around investigating crimes. And it's going to be pretty cool. Um, a really cool actor, uh, Charlito Copley, uh, you might know him from District 9, or he was actually in Elysium as well, played a really cool bad guy in that movie, actually. And probably my favorite role from him, which is so underrated, and I don't know why people hate on this movie, but the A-Team, that was a solid movie, and this is the guy who played the crazy guy in that one, the pilot, so I really liked him as an actor. Thought he did very well. Um, and then you also have Eddie Izzard. Uh, he's in a bunch of the Oceans movies. The Riches was a TV show he's in. He's been in a bunch of different projects, so you have a lot of cool actors actually already signed on to do this, um, but it, it's just... It's just going to be a take on the superheroes that you haven't really seen. Usually superhero shows or movies take from the vantage point of people with superpowers. This one's going to kind of be on the vantage point of people without superpowers trying to corral those superpowered people. Hmm. So it would also be kind of like the opposite of the... Uh, uh, close I can think it would be the opposite of like the X-Men setup where you'd have like the government agents trying to round up the mutants. Yeah, kind of, but they're not trying to... They're not trying to round up people with powers. They're just trying to, you know, make sure that they are good citizens, not just running around doing whatever the hell they want. And it's hmm. kind of like it's kind of like his police division That's is like the SVU division. It's a special division just to investigate these special cases. They don't necessarily happen that often because in a world with a, with a lot of people with superpowers, of course you have your superheroes and you have your supervillains. And one of the things is that the lead detective in this show actually used to be a really, really popular superhero and then somehow lost his powers in a fight. So the only way he can continue to fight crime is that he it becomes a detective. So that's that sounds pretty cool. And one of the story arcs, I was reading a couple of their story arcs, and it seems like this comic series really is good at breaking it down into, okay, seven comics is going to tell this story. You know, here, there's one or two standalone episodic comics, and then we're going to tell another big story. So it's pretty cool how they do that. But um, So the first case is actually the investigation of a famous costume person called Retro Girl, um, who's mysteriously murdered. Now, she was one of the most famous superheroes, and they use famous because these guys are kind of like celebrities in this world. Um, and she did, she gets murdered, and they have to go out and find out who murdered her. But I just think it's going to be a really cool, gritty take on the whole superhero genre. Something 
something that we haven't seen, but we're starting to see more of. Yeah, and you're saying this is coming to to PlayStation? PlayStation Network, yeah. So that's another cool part of this is that PlayStation is jumping into the ring with you know the Netflixes, the Amazons, and all them, and and throwing out their own original programming to yeah. you know. Kind and, of and just in general, we're now seeing pretty much every streaming service making their own stuff. Because I mean, PlayStation has had its own television streaming service for a while. Like, I know it's there. I haven't really used it. I don't know very many people that have. But if even they're jumping into making original content, what I I don't know what's, what we can say. It, it just seems like. Uh, I Everything think this is a, a little thing. bit to catch up with Xbox, because remember Xbox announced a slate of six TV shows. Now, a lot of those got canceled, but um, they still have a Halo yeah, TV series Yeah, some of those out. just tie-ins with games anyway, right? Some of them were, but like the Halo series is still coming out, so they're really trying to just compete on that level, which I find interesting. Don't get me wrong. Uh, I, it's, it's a double-edged sword. You know, I love getting all these different TV shows, and they can make them you know, more specially tailored to the people who play those video games, which, you know, me and you're on that system, so, okay, what, do I, what does our demographic want to see? And this is it. So I do enjoy that, but, you know, it's too many places to get too many good stuff, you know. That's somewhat true, but at least for me, and I think for you too, where do you watch most of your streaming uh, services? On my on my Xbox. Yeah, and I, I watch most of them on my on the PS3 or on the on the Wii U. Um, if they same system, you know, adds extra stuff. If I if they make it accessible, that's fine. Like actually, Nintendo did a good job with that. I think PlayStation and Xbox started rolling that out too of um, having the ability to just kind of conglomerate all shows into one application. Uh, like, Nintendo TV can do that. Like, I can have all my uh, Netflix and Amazon Prime and Hulu and cable TV library in one location and just select which one I want to play whatever from. Which is, um, which is, that's not what I'm complaining. That's not what I'm worried about, because you're right. They do a very good job of consolidating a lot of these into one place. What I'm worried about is going to be, you know, I'm going to have to pay $8 for this network because I want to watch this one show, or $7 a month for this network because I want to watch that one show, or, you know, and then it's going to end up I'm paying, like, $200 a month to watch just the shows I want. Or, or you're back at the same price that you had when you were paying for cable, but cable. now you get to uh, fast-forward and rewind for free. Well, I guess that is a bonus, and you get to start and stop well, when you is want. Is so. power going to cost anything? Um, I think it's going to be free with your PlayStation Plus. So, kind of, gonna cost kind of. Yeah, I mean, it, it's going to be a bonus to the PlayStation yeah. Plus if you've already had it. So, because now I, that I do I think, think it's it, really cool, though. Yeah, now that I think of it, I actually um did w- used to watch another PlayStation show uh, a few years back on the. PS3, they had the, uh, like kind of a reality show called The Tester, and you know I was just getting into working professionally as a software tester, so I watched it. It was pretty fun, and that was also free. I'll just download it to my PS3. Um, so I guess I have seen something on the PlayStation. That's the only thing I can think of. But, but yeah, but that's not quite really. what we're talking about. Not, not yeah, quite this is now them series. doing their own like yeah. you know fictional universe and. All a pretty elaborate project here. They're really stepping the game up. Well, and like I said, this Powers universe, I really am interested in that. It's not. I I actually when I read the story that they were going to come out with the show in December was the first time I had really heard about that universe. And so jumping into doing some research on it, I, I it just really seemed like something that I wanted to watch. And they're bringing the right actors. Like I see that the uh, Charlito, uh, he's a really really cool actor in all the movies I've seen him in at least. So. I'm looking forward to it. But, you know, let us know what you guys think. Uh, are you looking forward to the show? Is this going to be stupid? I mean, I can't imagine you'd say it's going to be stupid. Just agree with me, comments down below. <laughs> eh, you know, come on. I it's all you ever need to do, agree with us. <laughs> no, you can disagree with us sometimes, but on this, I think you're going to agree with us, folks. I think this is going to be solid. I'm giving it my Brian stamp of approval. That That's that's my stamp, is just my hand. I don't have <laughs> Didn't have to do that, man. But yeah. So hit us up. Hey, where's my face? On Twitter and stuff. I don't even want to go through it. No, I'm just joking. Hit us up. Comments down below, of course. You don't always have to agree with me. I just know you want to. That's that's all I'm saying. And I see you agree, and you're nodding. He's nodding. It's a, the camera's still on me because he's not saying anything. He's doing this on purpose. Hey, camera... I said I was interested already. All right, I can't go against it now, although wait. <laughs> what's that? Sudden change. This is not going to be interesting. <laughs> Just to spite yeah. you. <laughs> so hit us up at Words for My Face on Twitter, Words for My Face at gmail.com. Of course, Google Plus, 
and Facebook and let us know what you think. So let's roll that in to one of my favorite segments every week. I really enjoy writing this one up. This is probably my favorite thing to write every week. And I'm saying this like this so that Brendan has time to get ready for the sound effect. But that is Quick Hits of the Night. Remix. <laughs> and he's getting a really close eyeball. But yeah, so let's start it off with the first Quick Hit. And that is the beleaguered film Ant-Man has just started filming. So uh, we're actually going to see it. Whether so it's going to be sick or not. Who knows? But we're finally going to see that movie. So I'm, uh, I'm kind of happy about that. Uh, let's roll that over to the next quick hit. And that is uh, Simpsons this Thursday. If you are a huge Simpsons fan, go ahead and take... From Thursday, take the next 12 days off because they are running all 552 Simpsons episodes in a row in a marathon that will take them 12 days long. Five? What? How many do they have now? 552 episodes. You know, I actually vaguely remember them getting to 300, and I guess that must have been years and years ago now. Yes, yes. Oh, wow. Yeah, getting to 300 was probably like 20... <laughs> Not 20 years ago. Probably like 10 years ago. That was about a decade. Wow. Yeah. So that's a lot of episodes. And so if you're a Simpsons fan, you're going to be happy pretty soon. But let's roll it but over to the next. take a break out to watch Words From My Face. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just, just pause. Or DVR. And then there you go. I mean, it's only two hours. Come on. I mean, if you're watching 12 days worth of Simpsons, you can take a two-hour break. Come on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could. But yeah, so here's the next quick hit. And that is Blizzard is going to add Robin Williams, the deceased actor, as an NPC character in one of the new uh, expansion packs, I believe, for World of Warcraft. There's also a petition out there to have Robin Williams added into a Zelda game sometime in the future, which Nintendo said, we really love Robin Williams, we really love his daughter, we've worked with both of them before. If you don't know, Robin Williams actually named his daughter Zelda after The Legend of Zelda. And they said, we're not making any promises, but you might see a Robin Williams pop up in one of those. So they're immortalizing them in all the ways they can. Well, they even were a little bit vaguer. They said that they all loved him, um, but now is not really the time to talk about future development plans. They're going to let you know things sit and let people mourn the loss and everything, let that go through first before trying to cash in on it or anything. They pretty much said no promises, but we'll see what we can do. Yeah. yeah. So it, it would be cool. I would like to see it, but Blizzard will have Robin Williams in there because Robin Williams actually was a big fan of World of Warcraft too. Uh, so you're going to see him in one of those. He will be an NPC character. So look, keep your eyes out for that, all you World of Warcraftians. Yeah, and to be honest, World of Warcraft makes a little bit more sense. They've had other celebrities in World of Warcraft before as characters, and so big. They haven't really done that with Zelda. So My Night Elf Mohawk. Yeah, exactly. It, it's happened. So that, yeah. that one makes a little bit more sense. Yeah. But it, it, it'll be cool to see. So yeah. let's move it on to the next quick hit. And that is um, in a new story arc for the, the rebooted Guardians of the Galaxy that is ongoing with the comic book series. Uh, they're about to travel to the symbiote planet where Venom is from, giving us one of the first origin stories of Venom ever. Not really. They did Venom last time. Then the others uh, in the, the movies and everything else. Okay, where does Venom come from? The moon. No, he comes from. He jumps onto a spaceship. But he did, He wasn't born on the moon. Nobody knows where Venom comes from. They never really he comes, explain. He comes from inside the moon. He doesn't. He is the dark evil the force of the moon. There is no such thing as a dark evil there force of the moon. There is the dark evil force of the moon. It's called. Well, Venom. apparently, there's a planet <laughs> full of these symbiote things, and the Guardians of the Galaxy are going to go there. So you're going to get a real look at where his his very first steps were taken as a symbiote. I guess crawls like sludge oozes. Like if you're a symbiote world, I guess you just it's just a liquid world then. Right. No, what I don't know. We'll, we'll find out, I guess. But yeah, so. I, I don't know. What is whatever? Are they going there to like try to destroy them for some reason? Because you don't, they're I don't not know. really like pure evil. They're just the story hasn't happened problems. yet. They just they just said they're going to give. I mean, maybe maybe Venom was an evil symbiote and Carnage are evil symbiotes, and they get sent off their world and they just end up on Earth. Well, Carnage is like. <laughs> 
is evil, but Carnage is like the evil version of, of Venom. Venom's otherwise just like, oh, he enhances aggression and has huge survival instincts. So, okay. But we'll find out. We'll find out. Guardians of the Galaxy will fill us in with all the details. Hopefully. And hopefully they won't just let us down. I guess I need to start writing the, reading the comics now, don't I? I talk a lot about the comics on the show, and I don't read very many. I just love all the storylines that come out of them. I don't Maybe know. Maybe we why. should just go to Comic Con sometime and just hang out yeah. with the people, find yeah. out. If you want to send us to Comic Con, go ahead and write me a check. Yeah. You, you can actually just give us the tickets, too, if you are that suspicious, but we can also scalp those. I mean, we'll go to Comic-Con. <laughs> we'll go to Comic-Con, and we won't just repost somebody else's stuff like we actually went. Yeah. Okay, so let's move it on to the last quick hit. No, I don't want to. And that is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Top of the box office again this weekend. Um, I actually was one of the people who went and saw it, and I enjoyed it. Now, there's no topping the greatest movie of all time, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, Secret of the Ooze, and I'm dead serious when I say that's the greatest movie of all time, but that's another topic for another time. Um, coming in, number two was Guardians of the Galaxy, and number three was Let's Be Cops. Let's Be Cops, that's a movie... Now, I read uh, the newspaper, and I like to read the movie reviews, not that I always go by whoa, what they whoa, say. Whoa, 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 You read? So, I know it surprises me too sometimes. I'm like, what am I doing? What are these letters on the page? Why am I just staring at them blankly? It, it happens sometimes, even by accident. But yeah, Let's Be Cops is the only time I've ever seen a reviewer give a movie zero stars. I've seen them give them half stars. I've seen them give them one and a half or one star, but I've never seen zero stars for a movie. So I think I can think of maybe two movies that got zero stars. I probably I... watched them too. From Justin to Kelly. Oh, I haven't watched that one. I'm yeah, not that was watching a movie. It. In case I don't watch musicals on horrible movie of the week. That's just yeah. A, that's oh, I didn't watch it. Uh, I guess I saw part of it because it was in the room. Um, but in any case, oh, yeah, because stars. you were in the room. Oh, because you're not because I you rented it from Blockbuster when it was still around and popped it you in. You know who rented it from Blockbuster? You did. That's why I was in the room. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Is that how it went? <laughs> it was my fault. But yeah, so that was. But also, think Cradle to the Grave. Yeah. Uh, that wasn't horrible though. Yeah, it was bad, but it wasn't horrible. But quick hits of the night. Eyeball. Eye eyeball. Okay, so <laughs> well, Brendan backs off of the camera. Um, yeah, so let's move it on to our video game segment of the night, and that is uh, we're talking about Gamescom. Gamescom just happened last week, and it, it was. It's actually really big. It was almost as big as E3 this year. And Gamescom, I believe, that's the one that takes place in Germany, correct? I have no idea. Okay, well. <laughs> Why would you I'm ask just, me this? I'm just going to say it takes place in Germany. And you know this what? Year, that, that should be our new go-to country. Like, if we don't know where something happened, it happened in Germany. Yeah. Now you guys know. <laughs> where did where that, that thing happen? happen? Germany. Germany. When, when did that time happen? Oh, Germany. When did that time happen? That could have happened anywhere. <laughs> That's me using the English language incorrectly, kids. But yeah. Where did the uh, you know the Hundred Years' Wars take place? Germany. That happened in Germany. <laughs> Where did China first start? In Germany. The and Tokyo it, Olympics in Germany. <laughs> in Germany. <laughs> You know, just anything happened in Germany. You know, where was the gold rush of eighteen forty nine in Germany? But yeah, so but yeah, so a lot of big news actually came out of this one, and I'm just going to kind of go through some bullet points, things that. By the I way, that actually interesting. Is Germany, the Gamescom, it's in a, a North Rhine Westelfia, Germany. So it's Think in alone. Germany. Yes. Okay, so I was right. Sweet point for me. You're right for once. There you go. But yeah, so but I'm just going to run down some of the bullet points of some of the coolest things that I saw coming out of GamesCon. And it started off with uh, DayZ. Now, you might remember this. This was uh, kind of a mod for a, a shooter, a Arma 2, I believe. And somebody modded it to make it like a zombie survival horror game. And it took off so much that the manufacturer of that game was like, well, hey, if so many people like this, we could repackage it and sell it ourselves. And so they released that on PC, and it was huge, huge on PC when it first came out. And now it's going to be coming to PlayStation 4, so if you are already a PS4 owner, look forward to that. That should be pretty cool. You don't look no. convinced, Brendan. I'm not convinced. 
You know, I know like, I've heard about like fighting zombies. Yeah, I you know I've heard about the game. And people say it's really good, but I'm just I'm not into the big zombie games. Just I'm just not. I mean, I like them if you do it right. I mean, zombies are cool because you're killing things that look like humans with no remorse because they're dead. You know, I mean, what's the better? It's like here, just blow this thing up. It looks like a human, but it's not really a human. There you go. Satisfies all your human killing needs. I, your I'm really trying to think there. of a zombie game that I enjoyed though. Really? I'm trying. You didn't like any of the Left 4 Dead games? How about the I Resident Evil them. ones? Resident Evil I had. Play, I have Resident uh, Evil. I I played well, for a little bit. When you don't play any of the best ones that come out of the genre. I played a little bit of Resident Evil. Didn't get my. I, I didn't care though. Yeah, I played. Uh, I think awesome. I played. Um, I don't know. What's the one where you you're just in a mall and you just kill zombies like? Dead Alive. Uh, no, no. Um, not Dead Alive. Uh, that's a movie. Uh, you, uh no. Um. Like, well, right? whatever, that Some one dead, where you just yeah, kill a bunch of zombies. Yeah, it's kind of fun, but you, you get bored pretty quickly. Yeah, well, if you don't progress through the story. It's zombies. Okay. What, what story do you need? Well, Come on maybe now. you get new zombies. New killer zombies. But yeah, so Daisy's coming out for all you zombie game fans. Obviously not Brendan. That's not him. He's not a zombie game fan. So... Well, let's move on to the next one. Imp- Infamous First Light. Uh, they showed a little bit about that, and this one's going to be a, it's it's going to be kind of a battle arena game. That's kind of what they showed off, which I think is really cool because the Infamous games are awesome flying around with your powers and your lightning and everything. So they're and I believe in the Infamous Second Son, they kind of did it a little different where you have more of a skill tree, and so we're going to see be able to take your custom characters into the battle arena for Infamous. Uh, first light, so uh, it's pretty cool. It's a game I really enjoyed. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'd say to you. Yeah. So Brendan's not going to be much help on this segment. All right. <laughs> so <laughs> another thing that happened: um, the Order 1866, one of the games I am really, really looking forward to, where you are a group of kind of the spiritual successors to the Knights of the Round Table from King Arthur's days. Nope, and, can't happen. Um, well, it can, it can, because they have that news. We did a story on it a while back, so just look at a previous video. No spiritual successors, out. only in uh, in Knights, King Arthur and the Knights of Justice, but they're at the same time. <laughs> they're spiritual successors, yet they happen at the same time. You so, remember that show, don't you? Of course I do. The football, so, the captain, yep. of course, King Arthur for the football team that went back in time. Yep. Yeah. Merlin, take the football team back into the past. To be King Arthur's court because and they're somehow they glass. could tap their chest and their weapons would come out and they'd be like sweet, and then put it back. Oh wait, I didn't put it back. I stabbed myself through the armor. Oh no, this is bad. Why didn't ever anybody ever warn me? Yeah, stuff like that happened. Okay, it was awesome. Really. It would have been better if it did, <laughs> but I didn't enjoy the show. <laughs> I did enjoy the show, but they're introducing Nikola Tesla is going to be one of the characters in the show, and if you know anything about Nikola Tesla, um, pretty much he's the guy who Thomas Edison stole all his ideas from. Every single one, well, not including what to eat. Uh, okay, yeah, uh, that, that's right. Yeah, Thomas Edison was on the Nikola Tesla diet, which <laughs> comprised of tungsten. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, so, but that that'll be cool because uh, Nikola Tesla is one of the cooler historical figures that seem to have gotten passed over by too many people. Yeah, except for lately, he's just for some reason. I don't know, the last, like, five years has exploded in popularity. Everyone now is rediscovering, oh, Tesla was the guy that actually did a whole bunch of cool stuff. Mm-hmm. And they're like, well, some of his ideas might still be feasible. Like that whole, uh, he was developed in a way to trans- uh, transfer energy all across the world wirelessly so you wouldn't need, like, cords and stuff. Well, not not across <laughs> the world, but in general to an area. Yeah, yeah and, and I've actually seen across the world, projects yeah. that do it. So. Yeah, so, I mean, and that's all based off of his his research, so that was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, another thing coming out at uh, GamesCon, um, the next Tomb Raider is actually going to be a exclusive for a certain amount of time title for Xbox One, meaning Xbox One's probably going to get it like for three months, and then it'll come out on another Yeah, system. and that's pissed a lot of people off. Um, that one, honestly, what I, I would say about that is... That wouldn't piss as many people off if it wasn't for the terrible PR they did to announce it and explain the reasoning. Like, it's very clear. We negotiated something with Microsoft. They gave us some good incentives to do this. Right? Okay, fine. That happens in games all the time, even though 
this has not been a two a, an Xbox platform exclusive ever, and this is like the seventh rendition. Fine, whatever. You negotiated a good deal. Microsoft has good uh, good negotiators. But what they came out and said was, oh, we think that this will be the best move for the franchise because the Xbox One is the best place for it right now. It's like, no, no, it's not. Like so there is no possible yeah. way that that's true. Like it's better than the PC, which you've been on. It's better than the PS4, which is very similar specs, just slightly better. Like, I would, no one's believing this. Like, just come out and tell us. We negotiated a deal. This was part of the deal. All right, fine, we'll move on. We'll be upset that we don't get Tomb Raider on better platforms. But, uh, you know... I mean, you can't blame them for trying to spin it, but I get you. I get you. Their spin was horrible. When has had to spin it like that before? You know, Squaresoft uh, chose PlayStation over Nintendo. They said, well, they, I guess they did have technical reasons there. But well, I just look also... at the Bethesda. What Bethesda did with Skyrim in the console releases, mm-hmm. how you were getting, uh, on Xbox, you were getting DLC six months to a year before you were getting it on the PlayStation. So yeah, that, was and that, was just, that was just deals negotiated. You might say um, there's logical reasons of... You know, if we were going to just pick one to start with, that gives us more time to do the other, or we don't have enough resources to do both at, uh, at the same time, and so we went with the one that gave us the deal. But don't give us this this crap that Xbox One somehow benefits the game so much. Yeah, it it, it doesn't. Okay, we're not <laughs> buying it, Square. You we're got not. a bunch of money. Fine. That, that's just as fine. long as that's you keep little... your Final Fantasy titles on the PlayStation, give us exclusives over there, because I'm a huge Final Fantasy fan, and I'm getting a PS4 next, so do that for me, Square, and I'll be happy. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and let's move it on, and uh, apparently uh, Hideo Kojima and Guillermo del Toro are going to be teaming up to do a new Silent Hill game. So I think that's a pretty cool team up. Uh, you'll probably see uh, Del Toro do a lot of the monster designs, which he is known for, and Kojima, you know, just doing his mastery of video games like he always does. Yep. I, I just think that's a really cool team up. I mean, especially if you've ever watched any Del Toro movie. I mean, think about Pan's Labyrinth. Those would be perfect characters for any Nazi. Silent Hill game. Well, it does give me nightmares too, but but yeah, those would be perfect. Perfect to be able to put in any Silent Hill game. Even or the Hellboy Silent series, he did those really cool uh, monsters and just different characters for the Hellboy series. And you're also going to get the the guy who was in Boondock Saints and The Walking Dead. I don't know his name because it was I didn't feel like writing it down to be honest with you. You know, honestly though, the character. I, I thought it was weird with the name for that though. I don't like it when they just like add an S. Like Alien did that too. Alien Aliens. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Are, are you going to go confusing. to multiple hills now? <laughs> Silent Hills. <laughs> What's the next is one? Is this going to be an open world Silent hill. hill? Is that why? Silent oh, Three Hills in succession. Uh, it's very quiet right, over right. here. It's very, very quiet. I did hear though that was a that was a cool demo in that no one knew what the game was until they completed the demo. Yeah. They so. didn't realize that Silent Hills was coming out or anything like that. They're like, oh, here. <laughs> You beat so, this game that you already like. Here's what the game is. <laughs> so there By you the go. way, it's one of our big franchises. <laughs> one of the big ones that kind of died towards the end, but we're trying to rejuvenate. So let's hope they rejuvenate it well. Yeah, um, you know, honestly, it's got a lot of talk lately. I, I hear people now talking about Silent Hill all the time as one of the great horror games from um, from back in the day. So yeah, probably a good time because I I've been surprisingly seeing it a lot from a lot of uh, game reviewers and things just talking about their favorite um, like horror games. Silent Hill is always on the list, so Thanks, good time. Go. So looking forward to that. And uh, the last kind of piece of information, well, not the last, I'm sorry, I have a few more, but one of the last in- pieces of information that came out of uh, GamesCon was uh, COD Advanced Warfighter is going to have a special one terabyte Xbox One bundle. And damn, our hair what? drive's getting huge. What? One yeah. terabyte? One TB, that's what it stands what for, What are they right? going to do? What? Oh, whoa, 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 hold on, wait, 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 okay. The I mean, Xbox is going to have one terabyte, or the game's going to be one terabyte? No, the Xbox is going to have a one terabyte package. Oh, okay, that's not a big deal. I was thinking that we were talking about... Oh, that's like the biggest game, game ever. It's going to be a terabyte game. It's like every <laughs> game like, made what? for the Xbox 360 all in one. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but okay, still. Okay, one terabyte uh, Xbox bundle, that's not a big deal. I mean, that stuff is cheap now. 
like yeah, whatever. But, I still have a 120 gigabyte Xbox at 360, and my hard drive is huge, and it's still I have like 15 games on that thing, and I, I love it. So do you really need yeah. a terabyte? No. If it's cheap, I mean, you do I guess not, for right? newer games, newer games getting bigger and um, downloadable that's content true. being the bigger stress. Yeah. If you that's that's actually something I was surprised I didn't see bigger starting out with now because they're really trying to push the uh, downloadable content now or just downloading the games. And if you need, if you're going to do that, you, you do need a big drive. If yeah, these well, that's are, true. I mean, yeah, games have gotten bigger and bigger and bigger, and yeah, the Blu-rays can handle more space, but yeah. it, they have gotten huge. But uh, yeah, so next one is uh, Far Cry 4 looks awesome. I was not a fan of Far Cry 3. I played the Far Cry Blood Dragon. Not a fan of that either. But Far Cry 3 looks, I mean, 4 looks amazing. It's just really going to be cool. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, and a little bit of Super Smash Brothers news came out because apparently they'll never stop releasing new characters. And Meta Knight has been announced for uh, the new Super That's Smash Brothers game to return. He was the uh, big one in in Brawl. Like I thought it was going to be cool, and I stopped playing him. But apparently, he's one of the best players in Brawl. He's like one of the most overpowered ones. Um, but hey, cool. So he's coming back. I was surprised that he. If I'd be would have been surprised if he didn't come back, given his popularity. Um, but yeah, yeah, they, they're, this game was supposed to be out, like, now, originally, they're pushed back to October, but, and instead um, of, well, we talked about game delays, which, uh, not too yeah. mad at them for that, but, yeah, uh, but I'm I mean, if it was out, still announcing characters, characters at this point, I, it's like, they have, like, 50 characters on this roster already, so, which is not bad, absurd. like, hey, you know what, you want to get us more characters, I'm cool with it, just make sure the game comes out. You yeah, well, yeah. If you want to get the game eventually, so yeah, that's the thing. And uh, just the last piece of information out of GamesCon, and that is Destiny has uh, GameStop is reporting that they have gotten the most pre-orders they've ever gotten for any new IP uh, for Destiny. So they're setting records already, and that game hasn't even come out yet. Uh, Honestly, which will that very makes sense soon. To me. Destiny we're saying looks it's, awesome. Yeah, we're saying it's a new IP. I'm telling you, this is what I'm thinking about it, and this is what everyone's thinking about it. This is Halo. If they did, if they started Halo with more experience and more tech, yeah. yeah. If yeah. they could just redo Halo as a with all the experience they have from making Halo, this is the game. And now and it's gonna it be cross platform. Amazing. And I just I want to get it now. I, yeah. I I wish I had it in my hands. I wish I could have been in the beta. It just looks so awesome. Mm. Yeah, so uh, getting ready for that. I but, might get back into into shooters for that game. Honestly, well, whenever go. I get a PS4. Um, well, yeah, which, I'm waiting until I get a PS4 too. But when but I get, yeah, it, I, mean, I have a feeling I I'll play that game for a while. The last big shooter I liked was Halo Three. So, so maybe maybe I'll maybe I'll get back into it. Cool. And uh, well, so that's what came out of Gamescom. At least what I was most interested in. What did I miss? Let me know in comments down below. Or what do you think about some of the things that we were just talking about? Hit us up at Words My Face on Twitter. Of course, Words My Face at Gmail dot com, Google Plus, and uh, Facebook. All good places to get a hold of us. But yeah, so I think that about does it for the night. That's our show. I thought it was going to be a little shorter. It turned out to be just as long as it always is. It happens. Yeah. But, as always, I am Brian. With me, as always, producer extraordinaire, Brendan. You. And we are going to headbang our way out of this joint, people. 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 Yeah. Well, yeah, what are you're they, aliens? You're about to play word you. Are they aliens? Are they not people? Are they are They're they not people. They are minions of Chewbacca. Ooh. Minions of Chewbacca. Well, I mean, I'm sure he'd see it that, that way. That would be the new uh, name of our fans, of our fan club, the Minions of Chewbacca. <laughs> minions of Chewbacca. So, M-O-C. Mock? Mm. They're the mock. What yes. up, mock? Mockians? <laughs> they can be mockians. That's even cooler. All right, we're going to headbang this. All right, let's headbang. <laughs>
Good night, everybody!